In this video, we are going to look at reporting on file downloads in Looker Studio. So GA4 file downloads and what we can do with reporting on those in Looker Studio, as well as creating a custom report in GA4. So let's start by having a look at the file download event in the parameters associated with it. When I'm first trying to understand how an event works, one thing I like to do is open the site that I'm looking at in tagassistant.google.com or Google Tag Assistant, and then fire the event that I'm interested in. So in this case, I'm gonna look at the file download event. So I'm gonna click on this. So that's downloaded a file. In GA4, if I go to admin and then debug view, We've got this file download event here. So we'll click on that. And then this shows me all the parameters associated with the event. I mean, it's all documented, but I like to see, see it in action. And sometimes the documentation actually doesn't show all of the parameters associated with a given event. Things that we see here, we've got this file extension parameter, we've got this file name parameter, and those both map to dimensions in GA4. We also have link URL that we're gonna use. Here you can see like the file name. If we click on this, it'll show you the file name that it captured for that event. And that, that's what will populate the file name dimension in GA4. So. Just wanted to see that. I find it helpful when I'm just sort of get, trying to get my head around an event I'm not familiar with. One thing I should mention is this debug view is only, only works when the uh, site is in debug mode. And by opening the site in Tag Assistant, I set it into debug mode. So that's why I did that. You know, I, I opened it in Tag Assistant, but then I came over here and you may be, I've been wondering why. So that's why. So now let's have a look at reporting on file downloads in Looker Studio. Okay, I'm in Looker Studio. And to do what I'm going to show you, you'll need to make sure that you have all of the GA4 fields that you're going to need. And to do that, when I'm recording this video, Google recently did an update to the GA4 connector in Looker Studio. You may not, you may already have all of this, but if you don't see some of the fields that we're using, what you'll need to do is go to your data source and click to edit the data source and then click refresh fields. And as I mentioned, Google just recently did a big update. So you see now we've got file name, file extension, got down here we've got link URL a whole bunch of other stuff so if you're not seeing it just make sure to do that now close that out go here and I've actually got a different data source I'm going to use for this demonstration so I'm going to insert a table here and it's using the data source I want the sample GA4 data source so now let's have a look. If I go here and I say, I want file name, and then I'm gonna switch this to event count. So you see it's got the event counts down here with file names, and then it has this row, this blank row. Well, the reason for that is that event count is counting all events. So what we can do to fix that is we can add a filter. I'm going to create a filter and I'm going to say, I like to prefix my filter names with the data source they're acting on. So I'm going to say the event name equals file download. Save that. All right, so I got rid of the blank row and we know that it's just reporting on file download events. So that's the simple way of doing this. I'm gonna show you some cool tricks. Let's start by, I'm gonna add a custom download metric in GA4. There are a couple of reasons I wanna do that. One is I like having custom metrics that I can report on with other dimensions. So in this case, I'm gonna create a downloads custom metric. And if I wanted to see how many people were downloading files, based on the channel they came from or something. Well, by adding the custom metric, I'll be able to do that. Whereas doing the method of filtering by event name, 
The problem with that is then that filters the whole report to only report, report on a single event, which tends to screw up all other metrics. So that's one reason. And the other I'll show you at the end is that with that custom metric, we'll be able to create a report in GA4. So let's create our custom metric. The first thing I do is, this is a little weird, I'm going to add a parameter to the file download event that I can use for my downloads metric. And we'll have a look. I've already created it here. So what I've done is you can see the modification name, add count parameter to file download event. And what I can do here with this functionality is with incoming events, I can go and I can add parameters to them. So in this case, when the event name equals file download, what I want to do is add a parameter file underscore download underscore count and set the value to one. So I've already set that up. It's already counting. And then the next thing that I do is I go to custom definitions and custom metrics, and then we'll have a look here. So you can see what I've done is I've created a metric called downloads, and it just gets the value of that download file download count. And if you think about it, every time a file download happens, the value of a file download count is going to be one. So this metric looked at by any dimension is going to show you the total number of downloads that happen. So I've done that. Now let's go back into Looker Studio and we could actually go ahead and change up the report that we already created using that metric. So we go back to Looker Studio, we've got event count here. I'm just going to try something. I've already imported this downloads metric and thankfully I'm glad it actually does equal the event count. So, you know, this column is just counting events, but it's filtering so that the event name is file download. And then we over here we have downloads so I can get rid now of this column. I don't need that anymore. And that, you know, again, that seems like a lot of rigmarole for what, but if I wanted to switch here and let's say I'm interested in seeing, as I mentioned, so we'll do session default channel group. Well, now I get to see how many people did downloads based on coming from organic search direct, etc. So I like that metric, not necessary. You can create a download report without using it, but if you wanted to report on downloads in other ways, then this is a useful thing to do. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to juice up the report that we just created showing file downloads. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to resource and I'm going to go up to manage added data sources. Go to my sample data source and I'm going to add a new dimension here. I'm going to call it file download link. So I'm adding a new dimension that I'll be able to use in my report. And there's two things I want to do with it. One is if you noticed the file name dimension has the full file path. I personally, I don't really like that. It, it just gets kind of long and a lot to look at. I prefer to just have the file name in there. So we're going to extract just the file name using a regular expression and a regular expression is a way of pattern matching. You can use it to match text or to extract values from text. We won't go too much into regular expressions, but that's how I'm going to extract just the, the actual file name itself. And the other thing I want to do is have it be a link to the file so that somebody using the dashboard can just click on it and then they'll be able to see the file that people are downloading. To do that, I'm going to start by adding a hyperlink here. And then the parameters it takes are the URL and then the link label. So the URL I'm going to use is actually just the link URL. So if you recall, when we were looking at that event in the debug view, it link URL was one of the parameters and that populates this link URL dimension. And then as I promised, I'm going to do this regex extract and here what we want is the file name and then I'm going to 
add a regular expression. And what I want, I'm just going to do something really simple here. So dot star matches anything. And then I'm going to escape a slash. And in Looker Studio, you need to do two uh, backslashes and then a front slash two front slashes and a backslash. And that what that says is match the, the uh, front slash character versus it, that actually has a meaning in a regular expression. So I have to escape it. Then I'm going to do open parenthesis and I'm going to do dot star close parenthesis. And what that says is when I'm doing the extraction, I just want to get what's inside the parenthesis. So I think that's everything we need. Now let's try saving that. And now here, I'm going to try my file download link. And there it is. So you can see each of these. So it's got this link here. So if I click on a link here, let's see what happens. So it opened the file. As I was hoping, looks like I got the regular expression right. So, like I say, I mean, I just think, I don't know, it just makes it a lot more useful in Looker Studio to have that. First of all, it's just a lot more readable. If you wanted to know what page a person was on, uh, that is, so we could also add uh, the page path. And yeah, we'll switch order here. Sometimes I like to do that too, just so I can see, especially if I have a file that's on more than one page. I don't know. Like I say, I just find that really handy. The last thing I want to show you is creating a file download report in GA4. So let's go and do that. So in GA4, what we're going to do is we're going to go to reports. And then I'm going to click on this library icon, and this is where I can make changes to report navigation and add custom reports. I'm going to go to create a new report, and I'll create a detail report. I'll start with a blank report. And then for dimension, I'm going to go and find that file name dimension, and then I'll apply that. And for metric, this is where it's really handy that I created that downloads metric. So it starts with custom metrics. I'm going to apply that. And I, I mentioned in Looker Studio, I was actually using a different J4 account that has more data in it. Here, we don't actually get many downloads on, on my website. So it's not a super exciting report to look at. But if I want to, what I can do now is I'll, I'm just going to call this file downloads save that I'm going to go back and then what I want I want to add it to my lifecycle co collection so that it's available in regular reporting so from here I go file downloads drag that down here in the bottom save that save changes to current collection and go back and now you'll see Again, not super exciting because we don't get a lot of downloads, but if downloads something you care about, really handy now that I can just go right into my regular reporting and see that data. I won't go into this too much, but the file downloads, so this, the metric here is event scoped and it's reporting on downloads for this event. Using this dimension, this is also an event scope dimension, there aren't a lot of things that I can do with this dimension. I could add like users as a metric, I could add sessions as a metric, but there are some metrics like conversions I can't really show because there isn't the idea of like what is a conversion. Like maybe what you'd want to see is people who downloaded this file and then converted. Well, you can't do that when you're working with an event scope dimension. Off the top of my head, you could do that with like an audience. You could do it with a segment in explorations, but you can't do it here because this dimension's event scope. So this is not a lesson about event scope versus session scope versus user scope dimensions, but just to be aware that it's pretty limited what you can do with this. That's it. So let's wrap it up. Hope you found that helpful. If you did, please click the like button. And if you have any questions or comments, comment away, love to hear them, and check out toactobers.com for more 
videos, tips and tricks about GA4 and Looker Studio. We also do training and help organizations set up uh, GA4 and Looker Studio as well as other services. So check us out and really appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching.